Hello, I'm Sharon Rulier on Real to Real this Mother's Day weekend. We welcome a guest host, L. Platinitis from Mater Dolorosa School in Holyoke. L. won a chance to host our program in a silent auction sponsored by her school. We hope you enjoy the program and I will see you back here next week. Coming up on this edition of Real to Real. I'm Terry Hegarty. I'll be reporting on a national study regarding the impact that Latino Catholics are having on the U.S. Catholic Church. I'm Carolee McGrath. I'll have the story of a life-changing confirmation retreat in the Berkshires. And how one busy mom balances it all, keeping her faith in focus. These stories and more are just ahead on this edition of Real to Real. From throughout Western New England and beyond, this is Real to Real, your window on the world around you. Hello, and welcome to Real to Real. I'm Al Platinitis, a student at Mata Della Rosa School in Hollywood, and I will be your guest host for today. And we begin our program today with a focus on two new studies published this week on Hispanic Catholics in the U.S. Church and the shifting religious identity of Latinos. Terry Hegarty has our story on how the Catholic Church is moving to meet the needs of this growing U.S. population. Earlier this week, Boston College released a comprehensive national study indicating that the U.S. Catholic Church must adapt to meet the needs of Hispanic Catholics who are continuing to arrive here. Also this past week, the Pew Research Center released results of its 2013 National Survey of Latinos and Religion. The Boston College study contends that the explosive growth of Hispanic Catholics threatens to overwhelm the American Catholic Church, but the word overwhelm carries a rather negative connotation, and the influx of such devoted, devout Catholics is a great benefit to the Diocese of Springfield, according to many. It's a blessing, but at the same time, it's a challenge. And we can see, we, we do see nowadays the, need of, uh, the needs of each parish to, to offer the, uh, 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 Spanish uh, uh, masses and uh, uh, re religious education programs uh, and, and, and try to nourish uh, our brothers and sisters as, as one Catholic church. Offering adequate resources to the growing population could be seen as an overwhelming task, but in the Diocese of Springfield, Andres' office began implementing a Hispanic pastoral plan several years ago. This has helped them to prepare for today's growth. And six years ago, seminarians in the diocese began to be specifically prepared for Latino ministry. Bishop McDonald, first of all, wants seminarians to have a sensitivity of the various worship experiences, the various cultures that come together that make up the Diocese of Springfield. The men go to a parish in Holyoke to learn about the cultures firsthand and then branch out to all areas of the diocese. And then for a period of four to six weeks, we send them to the Mexican-American Catholic College in San Antonio, Texas, where they get a total immersion uh, in Spanish and hopefully will uh, be able to test their skills. Having an immigrant group assimilate into a parish is not just beneficial to the new arrivals, but is beneficial to the entire faith community. So this has been very helpful because I think we've increased the number of priests who are able to minister to the Latino population in the diocese uh, tremendously. One key in dealing with such a large influx of Hispanic Catholics in the Diocese of Springfield exists right here at Our Lady of the Elms College in Chicopee. Education and formation in the faith enrich participants greatly. And now you have a large uh, educated population of Spanish-speaking people who are very devoted to the church and devoted to a more uh, traditional uh, Central American uh, approach to living your, living your faith. 
And so there's been a growing need for some kind of theological education for the leaders of the Spanish community. Meeting that need is the Institute for Theology and Pastoral Studies at the college. Certificate programs are taught in Spanish and in English. Dr. Pion serves as the director of the institute. He says that the resources offered through the Elms has allowed the Catholic Church in western Massachusetts to be in better shape when it comes to serving Hispanic Catholics than many other dioceses in the country. But the sheer number of Hispanics seeking resources is still daunting. The numbers of people who came from Ireland or who came from Canada or who came from, uh, from, from France or Poland uh, is small in comparison to this, uh, th this current experience of uh, immig uh, immigration and migration because it's not just an immigration, it's, it's, it's also uh, the moving of populations within the country uh, is going to uh, give us challenges that are well beyond what we were dealing with 100 years ago. Andres says that his office strives to assist both the Latino and Anglo communities. We have the resources to help them out uh, in whatever uh, education in Spanish or bilingual and masses could be in Spanish pref preferably but it could be bilingual and, uh, 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 and some sort of social activities. The Pew survey found that while a majority of Hispanics in the U.S. still belong to the Catholic Church, more and more are going to Protestant denominations or are ceasing to practice any religion. Affirming this, the Boston College study contends that the secularization of Hispanics is the biggest threat to the future of the Catholic Church in America. Andres says that future success largely depends on praying for more Latino vocations to promote vocations. So we could get uh, a better, uh, in the future, let's say maybe 10 years from now, we could get more uh, um, uh, Latino uh, guys to be involved in the, in the priesthood. And, and also the woman, the woman religion is also very, very important. With prayers for vocations, learning more about the faith and the Latino culture, the faithful from all ethnicities are better able to enjoy a more enriching and rewarding experience as members of the Catholic Church. Reporting for Real to Real, this is Terry Hegarty. And learning more about the Latino culture is the focus of our next story. Recently, during spring break, some cathedral high school students took part in a tour of Costa Rica. Teacher Lynn Callahan and her students hiked, danced, cooked, and explored their way through the Central American country on a learning trip of a lifetime. Sharon Rulier has our story. Cathedral High School Spanish teacher Senora Callahan has built a tradition at the school of traveling abroad during spring vacations. For the last five years, she's taken groups of students to Italy, France, Spain, Ireland, and this year, Costa Rica. The whole point of the Costa Rican tour was cultural. We wanted to give the kids a really good sense of what it's like to be in a developing country such as Costa Rica. For many of the students who went on the trip, this was their first experience in a developing country. Well, I've been to the Bahamas, but it was on a, it was on a cruise. It's not really the same. <laughs> not the same at all. The students immersed themselves in the culture of the country as they ate rice and beans for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, hiked through the rainforest and ziplined over the treetops, not to mention their up-close and personal encounter with bugs. Before we got in bed, we would like lift their sheets up and make sure there's nothing <laughs> in them. <laughs> we put lots of bug spray on and there were, <laughs> I don't know if we should talk about that. <laughs> scorpions in one of our rooms. <laughs> but we got them out. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> we're back alive. <laughs> and capuchin monkeys in the trees at the beach. At an elementary school in San Carlos, they learned to dance. 
And they also played soccer with the students. Watch the ball. If you watch the ball, you're fine. We learned so much on that trip just with like experiencing things and our tour guide, Minor, also telling us stuff. Like we learned an interesting fact about Costa Rica, how 98% of their energy is clean energy, which is like just really astonishing on how much clean energy they have. And it's kind of an example for our country to look at. From a teacher's perspective, you can teach them something all year long, but when they get the chance to actually experience it, it is so much better. They're fully immersed in the culture, in their traditions. The group was in Costa Rica during Easter week, and they were able to experience and see how the people of this Central American country live out their faith. We went to an all-metal church, and so the whole church was made from metal, the whole outside and inside, and they had a lightning rod post, so in case during a lightning storm, they were there, it would hit the rod and go underground because of the church was all metal. Senora Callahan said the students witnessed the solemn nature of Good Friday as an entire town shut down to come together for the way of the cross. To see that procession and how involved and believing these people were, it was just, for me, it was wonderful. And even for our students to know that this is our faith and this is how it's lived out in other countries. It looks like the students really learned a lot on their trip, and they will remember for the rest of their lives. And still to come on Read or Real. New Spirit Retreats, Connecting Kids to Their Faith. And Peggy Weber introduces us this Mother's Day weekend to this busy mom who always keeps her Catholic identity in focus. These stories and more are still to come on this edition of Real to Real. The Chalice of Salvation. I'm Passionist Brother Terrence Scanlon, your Chalice host, inviting you to take time out of your busy life to celebrate God's goodness with us this Sunday morning at the early hour of 6 a.m. This week we welcome Father John Brennan from St. Patrick and St. Christopher Parish Communities and mark our annual Mother's Day Mass of Remembrance and Thanksgiving. The Chalice of Salvation, this Sunday morning at the early hour of 6 a.m. Mother's Day here on 22 News. The annual Catholic Appeal, continuing the tradition of neighbor helping neighbor, responding to Pope Francis's call to serve with love, serving our brothers and sisters throughout life's journey, caring for the less fortunate, walking with those in need. Make your donation of time, talent, or treasure online at diospringfield.org and help us to help our neighbors in need. Support the annual Catholic Appeal. Commercial fishing is thought to be the toughest job a man can do. Working with the underprivileged, consoling the inconsolable, helping others through all kinds of difficult situations, feeding the spiritually hungry, bringing Christ's comfort to the world, preparing those to meet Christ. The toughest job one could ever do? The diocesan priesthood requires real men. I'm Bishop Timothy McDonald, and I invite you to consider the call to diocesan priesthood. Real people, real lives, making a real difference. For more information on the priesthood, call our vocation office at the Diocese of Springfield at 413-452-0811 or email us at vocations at diospringfield.org. One of the programs being funded this year by the Annual Catholic Appeal is designed to help young people stay connected to their faith. New Spirit Retreats has been connecting with kids for 20 years. They held 2,000 retreats for more than 600 parishes. As Carol Lee McGrath reports, kids definitely leave their retreats renewed and excited about being Catholic. It was kind of like a private, unplugged concert for these 11th graders from St. Agnes Parish in Dalton, except it was their confirmation retreat. And while kids may have expected to be bored all day, they were anything but. Baby, baby, you know 
This was a New Spirit confirmation retreat run by Pat Sears and Barry Kingston. The nonprofit ministry has been connecting kids to their Catholic faith for 20 years. Co-founder Pat Sears is a father himself of five boys. As far as what they can expect, I'll tell you first, what most expect is that it's going to be uh, four hours of being serious and four hours of listening and four hours of class and four hours of mass. And that's just not at all what we're hired to do. You know, it's really not meant to be. The catechesis, the catechetical side is important, but it's a lot of information. And retreat work, whether it's ours or others, you know, is usually more heart-centered. And we're trying to help make that 12-inch connection from the brain to the heart. There's going to be two questions for each section. And the first two questions are which sins do I struggle with the most and which one do I have the best job controlling? Pat and Barry, a father of two and a rock musician, have run close to 2,000 retreats for tens of thousands of teens. They also have a New Spirit Week in the summer at Camp Holy Cross in Goshen. New Spirit Inc. is supported by the annual Catholic Appeal. The focus has always been to help kids develop a personal relationship with Jesus. Youth ministry is relational. It's about relationships. Jesus was about relationships. This Pope is about relationships. And all the, the good programming and catechesis in the world, we can do it standing on our heads. But until something becomes personal, it's not going to click. Jeff Polano is a junior at Wakona Regional High School. He's also a third grade CCD teacher. We did the second small group. We had to tell a small, like a story about our life and how it affected us and how it kind of turned us toward God. And like the story kind of drew tears from a bunch of people in the group, myself included, because it really hit home. It's like the first time you're talking about it and it's like, oh, everyone around here, no one's judging me, so I can basically talk about it as free as I want to be. St. Agnes in Dalton has been using New Spirit to run their confirmation retreat for years. It connects the, the sacrament of confirmation in their religious education. Uh, and they, they enjoy it, and so do we. For so many of these kids, this retreat is life-changing. Not only are they learning about a personal relationship with Jesus, but some of the kids over the years have come back to help volunteer. You guys ever had a moment, right? Ever had a moment in your life where you felt like God's presence? Connor Driscoll from St. Michael's Parish in East Longmeadow is one of those volunteers. The 23-year-old served in the Air Force and did two tours of duty in Afghanistan. Their whole thing with them, and we really focus on a new spirit, and a part of the thing is just being tools for God, helping other kids receive his message. We're not here to preach to them. We're not here to you know, be like teachers, like the traditional Sunday school teacher. We're here to be tools of God and to help these kids find their relationship to God. Connor also coaches wrestling at East Longmeadow High School and plays rugby for the Springfield Rifles. And you're kind of a tough guy, right? Air yeah, Force. So yeah, you're like, Air Force, yeah. So you're a, you know, a big, strong man, but you're still humble before the Lord. Oh, always, always. Because I feel like I, I could never be as strong as I am today without the Lord, without God. Without God in my life, I never find the strength within you know, to do things. I, I do things now that I never thought was possible. And it's all because you know, cause I, you know, I give praise to God. And Connor's witness and the witness of Pat and Barry are helping teens to reach for Christ in a world that often tells them he's irrelevant. So our job is we, we love the church. We love Jesus. We love mass. I didn't when I was a teenager. I want to help bridge the gap. I want to help come in in a way and, and present this in a way that's going to make them desire it more. And if things go from here to here and there's a, a connection that happens, then all the catechesis, all the mass, all the other the things that are important, the meat and potatoes of our faith become more important. Become more important to the future of the church. Reporting for Real to Real, I'm Carolee McGrath. New Spirit is only one of the 40 programs and agencies funded by the annual Catholic Appeal. Joining me now to tell us more about this important fund drive is Stacy DeBurn, manager of the ACA. Thanks for joining us today, Stacy. Hi, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. This year, we have been telling people how they can volunteer their time and talent to support the appeal. How is this going so far? 
Well, so far financially, we've seen donations from about 16,000 donors, uh, totaling about $2.2 million, which is great, a good start. And as far as volunteers are concerned, we've got a really good response so far, um, lots of people offering their time and talent. So we're planning a volunteer fair here at St. Michael's Cathedral on June 11th, um, where people will have an opportunity to speak to our different agencies and learn more about how they can give their time and talent for these wonderful programs. Okay, thank you Stacy DeBurn for joining us today. And again, if you haven't donated already, you can do so by following the link in our website at iobserve.org. Catholic schools like mine benefit from your donations, so thank you. As adult members of faith communities, we like to say the youth are the future of the church. That is true, but I believe the youth also are the church's present. Our high school and college age parishioners are here now with their energy, their talents, and their ideas. And with the guidance and support of adult leaders and older parishioners, our young people are bringing the gospel to life in their communities and beyond. So, in the May-June issue of the Catholic Mirror, we feature the long-running Haiti Plunge program. Founded 30 years ago by Sister of St. Joseph Eunice Tasson, this educational program has been powered by the hands and hearts of young Catholics from throughout the diocese who have brought hope to one of the most poverty-stricken nations on earth. Also in this issue, Catholic Mom, author, blogger, and quilt maker Patrice Fagnant MacArthur tells us how saints and spirituality can help us through our daily lives. And there is news of an upcoming visit of one saint's relic to Western Massachusetts, the 100th anniversary of a Catholic school in Chicopee, and a new health care program that will help senior citizens remain in their homes. A special feature by a local pastor, Father Sean O'Manion, explains why the popular devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus has endured for more than three centuries, and how it can help all of us to strengthen our relationship with our Lord and Savior. As we welcome the long-awaited days of summer in New England, I hope this issue of The Mirror will remind us of the special gifts that each generation has to offer. When we recognize and share the strengths of all members, we do not need a time machine to bring us to the future of the church. On the map of our journey as Christians, the arrow always points to today and tells us, you are here. At the editor's desk, I'm Rebecca Drake. From blogging, to reviewing, to sewing, to homeschooling, Patrice Fagnant MacArthur is a busy mom. However, at the core of all her activities is her faith. For this Mother's Day weekend, Reel to Reel's Peggy Weber visited Patrice in her Springfield home and tells us more about this remarkable young mother. Patrice Fagnant MacArthur is a remarkable young mother. And perhaps the most remarkable thing about her is her humility. When she became interested in quilting and wanted to make a special quilt for her foster daughter, she looked for some saint patterns. When she could not find them, well, she just decided to make them herself. So I downloaded some free quilt uh, creation software so I could design the blocks and I did research on the symbols behind the saints and I set out to do this project. She says she will design a saint block for anyone who asks and enjoys her Saturday night sewing sessions where she makes the quilts by hand. In addition to caring for her foster daughter, she also homeschools her young sons, David, 13, and Isaac, 11. We turn to homeschooling as a way to provide them um, with a better education for them. And it's really been wonderful to watch them grow and learn. And I get to learn new things too. I've always enjoyed learning. Patrice attended the former St. George School in Chicopee and is a 1992 graduate of Hoyle Catholic High School. She holds a bachelor's degree in art and history from Our Lady of the Elms College and earned a master's degree in applied theology from there as well. She has used that education for quilting and for many other projects. She began her own website, 
and blogs and reviews about Catholic matters, especially books. Her works can be found at spiritualwomanthoughts.blogspot.com. It's really uh, both a creative outlet and a, a, a ministry in a small way. And it started to really focus on women's spirituality, especially for busy moms. Uh, we don't always have the time to focus on our spiritual life. So it was really the focus to share uh, spiritual reading. Patrice says that one important factor for her as a mother is prayer every day. Lots of prayer. <laughs> I always start the day with prayer. You know, sometimes I'm doing it in between getting the kids breakfast in the morning or whatever, but you know, definitely need to get that prayer in the morning um, and then praying with the children at night. Um, you know, without that foundation in God, life would be much more challenging. When Patrice was a little girl, her school librarian told her that maybe she was taking out too many books about the saints. But little did that woman know that the saints would become the focus for Patrice's work, her quilting, and her life. In fact, Patrice's fascination with the saints was a perfect match for her when she was asked to write the Catholic baby name book. The Catholic Baby Name Book features over 10,000 uh, saint and biblically related names. Um, so for people who are looking for a faith-based name for their child, there are lots of wonderful names to choose from. And it includes uh, short biographies of saints and the history of where names come from, their meaning. In addition to writing a book and designing a saint quilt and homeschooling, Patrice volunteers at Holy Name Parish in Springfield. She maintains the parish website and Facebook page. She also takes care of the parish library, and she is the parish contact for the Child Advocacy Program. She praises her parents for instilling a deep and dear sense of faith. And she says the homeschooling community has been a blessing. When asked about advice she would give other mothers, Patrice breaks into her frequent smile. <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> Every child's different, you know, and every, you know, mother needs to figure out her own child. She encourages mothers to be good to each other and recognize that all of them are trying to do what's best for their child. The battles that mothers get into, whether it's, you know, breast versus bottle feeding when they're little, or homeschooling versus public or private education, or working at home, or um, working outside the home. Oh my goodness, we can be so cruel to each other sometimes. And it's important to realize every mother's just trying to do her best, and every child's different, and every situation's different. She said that God is with each mother on her journey, and that one should place their trust in the Lord. And she stressed again the importance of prayer. Definitely to have that foundation in prayer and to make it an example of how you live your life. I think children pick up so much more from how you live as opposed to what you say. And just keep at it. It's every day. It's a journey. <laughs> the journey of motherhood is something that Patrice clearly loves. It is a saintly calling with many moments of grace along the way. For Real to Real, I'm Peggy Weber. It's nice to see another mom who does so much for her family, and I would like to take some time right now to wish my mother and all the other mothers and grandmothers a very happy Mother's Day. And finally, remember this television program benefits from your donations to the annual Catholic Appeal. And there are 40 agencies and services helping the young and old alike who depend on the annual Catholic Appeal, so please consider making your donation. Thank you in advance for your support of the annual Catholic Appeal. For this week, that's Real to Real. Sharon Rulier will be back next week with another edition of Real to Real, your window on the world around you. Happy Mother's Day. Real to Real is a production of the Catholic Communications Corporation, funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal, and the support of you, our faithful viewers.